Hello and welcome to our face-to-face -face interview for today at the Women Deliver 2019 conference. All through this conference, we've had one amazing young woman from Ghana, West Africa, who has stolen the show. I'm here with her to tell, her her tell us about her story and what led her into DJing. Erica Tando, also known as DJ Switch. Welcome. Thank you. How are you? Everybody loves you here, DJ Switch. How is the feeling? How are you feeling? I feel awesome. It's great out here. Mm, yeah. Right. And you've been in Vancouver for a couple of days now. How are you loving the city? It's fun. It's, I mean, fabulous. Okay. It's fantastic. So people have been asking, how did you become a DJ at 11 years? Okay. So I was going for Talent Tickets 2017. And then I was going as a poet. But my parents were like, so why don't you try something to make you extraordinary? And then they hired the services of a DJ to teach me. And then I used only five days to learn how to DJ. And then I started DJing when I was nine in the western region, western part of um, Ghana. So I'm on that year, so that's where I come from. So it's pretty good. Mm. Pressing the buttons on the console when the uh, trainer is not around, that was pretty good. Right. And so you, 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 you became a DJ within this two-year period, and you yeah. are not just blown up in Ghana, but all over the world. <laughs> how, how does it feel? It feels awesome being known all over the world. That's a great thing, and that tells me to keep on doing what I'm doing. But in anything I'm doing, God first and then education second before I enjoy my music. Right. <laughs> so you want to do music and then now you are 11. What do you want to do um, next apart from your music and growing up? Okay. When I grow up, I want to be a doctor DJ. So I want to be a gynecologist. Wow. Why do you want to be a gynecologist? Uh, I want to be a gynecologist because I want to help women. You know, women got to support to women. So I want to make delivery so easy where I'll have my own hospital. I have my DJ set there. So when it's like the woman is suffering to give birth or deliver and the child is being stubborn in there, I'll just scratch, play my music and the child will be like, so who is playing that song in this hospital? Jump and then just come out. And it's the gynecologist that's <laughs> yeah, playing the song. Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> then we're going to have a lot of women delivering. Yeah. So you've been here um, and at this conference, big conference, more than 8,000 people are here, um, including presidents from around the world. And you have been speaking about gender equality as a young person. Yeah. What does gender equality mean to you as a young girl? Okay, gender equality. If I'm talking about gender equality, I will talk about the fact uh, of early marriages. You know, sometimes in most of the countries, girls are married at um, a, a tender age. Why is it supposed to be like that? Because all of the time you hear that, oh, this girl is being married at the age of 12, at the age of 13. Why don't you hear this boy is being married at the age of 14, at the age of 13, at the age of 11, but always girls? So if I'm talking about gender equality, I will talk about the fact that we can also have the power to stop um, early marriages and also uh, I had something in sub-Saharan Africa over 12 million uh, girls are at risk of never receiving education why does it need to be girls and not children so that means the girls in sub-Saharan Africa don't have equal rights like how the boys do they have the rights the power to do anything they want to do but they don't give the same rights to the girls who are in sub-Saharan Africa. And it's not only in sub-Saharan Africa, it is over the world. They, they mostly don't give the rights, the same rights to women and girls. Why is it like that? So if we're talking about the fact about gender equality, that's what I'm going to talk about. Um, um, giving women the same right, equal rights to do the same thing because in Ghana, you know, in Ghana or Africa, 
it is our perception that um, women or girls are meant to be in the kitchen or go outside on the street and just trade. No. So why do you say women and girls? And then you always send the boys out there to educate and you want us to stay in the kitchen, cook without education. No. So if we are in the kitchen and then you tell us our salt, what is salt? Because we don't we, we we've not acquired education. Add the spice. What is even spice? So you don't know salt, you don't know spice, how are you going to cook? Well, yeah. And how does that make you feel all of that when you are in school and you are in this environment where you don't feel like you have the same um, sort of respect, the same sort of opportunities f as your, um, the boys in your class and in your school. How does it make you feel and what are you doing about it? Okay, so for that, in my school, sometimes when we are doing games, it's like they will say that we're going to play a football match and then maybe run in athletics and then the boys will run. They will promise you, oh, the girls are going to be the next one to run. We want to watch the girls running. Okay, the boys are done running, and then it's time for the girls. When it's time for the girls, oh, so we are here. No, it, because of our time. So why do you need to promise? <laughs> yeah, so that is like, we don't have the same rights. Their focus is on the boys, but we can also do better. If you are running... Let me say this fact. In my school, I can run faster than a certain boy in my school. But then the boy is always allowed to run and not you. Right. So that means we don't have the same right. So what are you doing about it? So if I see something like that in my school, I always make sure that I approach the MC or the one in charge, the one who brought that games, that why are you not letting the girls show up because in my school choreography culture our traditional dance even if culture we have so many girls can you believe it's only one boy in our traditional dance only girls just one boy so if you want to show up in athletics running you don't want the girls to run you want only the boys who show you in traditional dance you need only one boy that's perfect Choreography, girls are leaders. Right. Girls, we are the ones that teach the boys how to dance. DJ Switch, you've been amazing at all, all of the days <laughs> that you've been here um, and with other people that you've been meeting. What has been your best moment so far at Women Deliver? Okay, my best moment is the Modric panel. And also, when I heard Auntie Natasha talking, you know, it's somehow encouraging. It encourages you, um, inspires you to keep on doing. You know, I was sitting right backstage and I heard her talking about how not uh, how to feel bored, go out there and then just peek out for your leaders to hear so they can serve you. I like that a lot. And I'm going to use that to tell my fellow girls out there that they shouldn't look down upon themselves. If I am doing this at the age of 11, I started at 9, it means she can even do it at the age of 6. So I want them to feel that they have the power to deliver. Power to deliver. That's the word from DJ Switch to all young people out there. And DJ Switch, you've been traveling around the world. You've been at the African Union headquarters. Um, you were in New York just um, a couple of weeks ago performing with Wyclef. Um, and here you are on this big stage performing in front of about 8,000 people at this very big conference. What, is, what, what do you think you're going to be doing next beyond uh, Women Deliver to change all of these problems that you've spoken about? Okay, so I have my foundation called the DJ Switch Foundation, which will yet to be launched. But I have three goals. I have quality education, good health and well-being, and also gender equality. So although I have not launched my um, foundation, recently I went to a school in Ghana and donated some desks to the school. So, um, and also I go to schools to tell the students out there to go to their areas and find people who are 
illiterate to help them also be li literate. So if you are illiterate, that means you don't even know your ABC. So it doesn't matter if you are in grade 6, grade 3, at least you have been in school. You know ABC, so you can teach the person in your area. ABC, how to use the ABC to form words, letters, sentences. So I go out there, um, talk about all those things, and then I pray I'll get sponsors so that I will organize workshops to talk about mostly gender equality and quality education and also having good health and well-being. Because I, and also I have um, three key words. That is the TLC. I said this um, when, yesterday at the main show. I said this T for tell, L for listen, and then C for clarify. So um, under T, that's tell. So um, the leaders out there should allow us, I mean, with the young ones, to tell them our dreams, our hopes, our wants and challenges we face regarding quality education, good health, and well, also gender equality. And then learn, the, uh, listen, sorry, L, they should listen to what we say because, because we are curious. We say things the way we see them. And also, they should clarify what we say, that's C, so that they can understand us and then build all the solutions around that because, you know, the future of my generation is what matters. And if I'm saying this, why am I saying this? Because if we, the children, are given the opportunity to sit at the table and given the opportunity to talk, we talk, we talk to bring progress and also to transform the community. Wow. This is amazing. Um, no, well, thank you very much, DJ Switch, uh, for yeah. coming. And um, you are lighting a torch not just around Ghana, but uh, the entire African continent, and indeed at the world stage um, <laughs> with all the work that you are doing. Uh, and we do hope that what you are doing will touch more lives. We will have many more young people who will go out there and build their own talents and their own careers and will hopefully be able to um, influence the conversation on gender inequality and yeah. giving opportunities for young people. Um, finally, before we go, th are there any songs? I know you you've been you lo you are into songs so much. Yeah. Which 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 are your favorite songs? I like all songs. Yeah, I like I like I mean all types of songs. All songs. When I was walking around here, people were like, "So, what's your favorite new song?" I said, "I like all new songs. <laughs> I can just choose one." and say, this is my favorite, I need to play a song. So it means your favorite, I choose one. And then it means that is what I like. I'm going to play only that song at the party. No more songs. No, I'm a DJ. I like her songs. <laughs> Well, that is it for us here at the Women Deliver Conference. It's been me, Justice Beidou, for joining us, Ghana. And Ghana's number one DJ, DJ Switch. Thank you very much. Thank you, too. Bye-bye for now.